I think it's obvious that we as humans with our finite resources, finite selves yes. and all these kinds of things, Good. obviously are not going to measure everything. It's just not possible. The scientific method from the beginning has been about making some small number of measurements of something, uh, then making a relatively simple model that we can contain within our heads, which is not that big, mm -hmm. of those things, mm -hmm. and then betting that you can extrapolate that very far from the measurements that you made and somehow get something that works over a much larger range. I think the question of this panel is whether somehow that kind of extrapolation has limits. As an example of a place where we know, not just because of human financial limitations, but maybe something a little more fundamental, we won't observe everything is in situations where there's a so-called horizon, where yeah. the finite speed of light prevents us from seeing behind a certain screen. Right. Um, but as Vijay says, even there, it may be <laughs> that we observe in our local region, we determine, you know, a very compelling model of physics which then has consequences for what is beyond our horizon. Yes. You know, experimentalists use what they call null tests to make they slice mm -hmm. their data in different ways, make sure they could come to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. You know, in our in our mathematical theories we do something very similar. We yeah. we make sure that the predictions work the you know, work the same however we organize the calculation and right. you know, there are you know, powerful thought experimental constraints that we can employ. And, and I think we all three agree that it's better to proceed under the assumption that you can make this extrapolation to try <laughs> rather than, than to, to just not give do up. it. Because it's worked. So yes. we should keep doing it. I was hoping I could hear your thoughts from each of you on what you think or hope might be the next big piece of the puzzle that physics might reveal to us. <laughs> the LHC, Large Hadron Collider, yeah. is running. Yeah. Uh, they just upgraded uh, from uh, 8 TeV as a measure of their energy up to 13 TeV in energy. Uh, it's not just a question about how much energy they have, it's also a question of their intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, and their intensity is ramping up very, very dramatically. And they're going to explore uh, ranges of energies uh, that will potentially reveal the new principles mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. And if they don't reveal those principles, that will be a very, very interesting Still thing. Interesting and if they result. do reveal those principles, um, that will be very interesting. So I think that that's something over the next, you know, four, five, ten years uh, where we're going to get a tremendous Great. amount of information. What I'm really excited about, and this is not a particularly original view, is gravitational waves, both okay. the ones that were just seen by the yeah. LIGO collaboration and the search for primordial gravitational waves, okay. which, again, whether it's a null result or a detection in the end, will teach us a lot about, in this case, the range of motion of the infoton field and in the early universe. And by primordial gravitational the waves? The same yeah. kind of stuff that leads to the formation of galaxies, but instead the fluctuations of the okay. geometry of the universe itself. Okay. And this is the classical gravitational waves that are predicted by Einstein's theory mm -hmm. were just, you know, have been inferred, you know, very concretely in, in other studies, but were recently detected you know, directly right. um, revealing a pair of colliding black holes, and that's going to get better and better right. with ma much, many more examples and statistics to do. And you know, it remains to be seen what all will be learned from that, but it's clearly the start of something. I think some of the greatest developments are going to be in the very complex, understanding mm. the very complex, the following sense. So in quantum gravity, I think we will indeed make progress in thinking about things that have very many uh, in, uh, internal components, like, like black holes, and we will make progress in understanding their fundamental physics, things like the information loss paradox. But there's another complex, uh, sort of complexity frontier that physicists are very heavily involved in. Mm -hmm. Things like understanding you know, how the many, many components uh, that make up the brain produce that sort of macroscopic phenomena that's you. Yeah. Or the components of cell, that uh, many, many molecules produce these sort of coherent behaviors of cells, these sort of emergent behaviors, if you like. So I think that's a major place where physicists, we haven't talked about that at all because we're, all three of us are from the uh, other end of the field, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I think that's an area where physicists are going to make really major contributions to understand that sort of, if you like, that complexity frontier. Mm 